क्लिक द बेल आइकन टू गेट लेटेस्ट वीडियोज फ्रॉम ई कीडा हेलो फ्रेंड्स लेटस डिस्कस द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ रिटर्न ऑन कैपिटल एम्प्लॉयड वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ वर्ड रिटर्न रिटर्न मीन्स रिटर्न ऑन इन्वेस्टमेंट इन बिजनेस वी यूज ओनर्स फंड एज वेल एज बोरोड फंड फॉर रेजिंग द वेरियस एसेट्स ऑफ द बिजनेस दीज फंड्स अर्न अर्निंग्स दो वी कॉल्ड एज वॉट रिटर्न्स दीज रिटर्न्स हियर ऑन ओवरऑल बेसिस दैट इज ऑन टोटल रिसोर्सेस हाउ मच रिटर्न आर अर्न दैट इज कंसिडर्ड हियर वाइल कैलक्युलेटिंग रिटर्न ऑन टोटल रिसोर्सेस और रिटर्न ऑन कैपिटल एम्प्लॉयड दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रेशो टू इंडिकेट वेदर द बिजनेस इज अर्निंग सफिशियंट अमाउंट ऑफ रिटर्न इन रिलेशन टू स्टैंडर्ड रिटर्न इन इंडस्ट्री let us understand the concept return on capital employed this ratio measures the relationship between net profit before interest and tax and the capital employed to earn it it is expressed as a percentage this ratio is also known as return on investment that is return on total investment or return on total resources return on capital employed is calculated as profit before interest and tax divided by capital employed multiplied by 100 components profit before interest and tax pbit profit before interest on long term borrowings tax and dividends less abnormal and non recurring items when we are calculating this ratio a particular year's profits may have been affected by some abnormal losses in that particular in that particular year so we are required to remove that effect of abnormal items so that we can get proper amount of return on total resources capital employed we can calculate equity capital plus preference capital plus reserves and surplus plus long term borrowings term loans and debentures less fictitious asset like miscellaneous expenses not written off and less profit and loss account that is debit balance loss we are required to note here capital employed may be taken to mean assets employed in which case capital employed can also be computed as fixed assets less depreciation including investment this is asset side approach of calculation of capital employed add current assets less current liabilities and excluding fictitious asset that is miscellaneous expenses not written off or debit balance of profit and loss account functions and purpose return on capital employed ratio is a profitability ratio it shows the relationship between profits and investments its purpose is to measure the overall profitability from the total funds made available by the owners and the lenders this ratio helps to judge how efficient the concern is in managing the funds at its disposal actual ratio interpretation and comments actual ratio return on capital employed of x percent indicates that on a capital of rupees 100 average net returns of rupees x is earned and this amount of rupees x is available for interest tax and appropriation for example return on capital employed is 20% it indicates that on a capital of rupees 100 net return of rupees 20 is on an amount of rupees 20 is available to take care of interest tax and appropriations actual ratio close to standard ratio there is no standard return on capital employed ratio in absolute terms each concern has to determine its own standard ratio based on its past ratios ratios of other concerns in the same industry 
and the average for the entire industry. An actual return on capital employed ratio close to such company standards shows an optimum profitability on each rupee of investment. That is optimum profitability on each rupee of sales, optimum gross profit, net profit ratio, optimum productivity that is generation of sales from each rupee of asset employed, optimum turnover of stock, debtors, creditors, fixed assets, sufficient returns available to take care of interest, taxes and reserves, optimum increase in net worth or proprietors fund, scope to attract fresh funds from owners or lenders, actual ratio higher than the standard, an actual return on capital employed ratio much higher than such company standard shows a very high profitability on each rupee of investment that is high profitability on each rupee of sales high gross and net profit ratio high productivity that is generation of sales from each rupee of assets employed high turnover of stock debtor creditor and fixed assets very large returns available to take care of interest taxes reserves etc great scope to attract large amount of fresh funds from owners or lenders here actual ratio is greater than the standard indicating that company is using its resources in the best possible manner to maximize returns to the owners as well as to the lenders actual ratio lower than the standard an actual return on capital employed ratio much lower than such company standard shows a very low profitability on each rupee of investment that is low profitability on each rupee of sales that is low gross or net profit ratios low productivity that is generation of sales from each rupee of asset employed low turnover of stock debtors creditors fixed asset very small returns available which may not be enough to take care of interest reserves etc less scope to attract fresh funds from owners or lenders in this case companies ratio is less than the standard therefore company cannot make investors happy or it cannot make lenders happy therefore there will be less scope to raise further funds for the company return on investment is a key ratio key ratio means very important ratio return on capital employed is more popularly known as return on investment return on investment is a key profitability ratio return on investment combines the net effect of all types of performance ratios profitability ratios and turnover ratio indicate the performance of company all these ratios are ultimately reflected in return on investment return on investment can be expressed as a product of two ratios return on investment is equal to net profit divided by capital employed multiplied by 100 net profit divided by sales multiplied by 100 or multiplied by sales divided by capital employed multiplied by 100 that is return on investment is a product of two ratios profit to sales and sales to capital employed substituting in the figures from illustration now here substituting means this sales denominator this sales numerator we can cancel return on investment is equal to net profit divided by sales multiplied by sales divided by capital employed multiplied by 100 here sales figures will be strike off so balance remains net profit divided by capital employed multiplied by 100 from the above it follows that margin on sales or turnover rate of capital employed are important in earning profits low or high rate of return on investment is due to both a fall in turnover rate or rise in cost has an adverse effect on return on adverse effect on return on investment it is because of this that return on investment is called broadest measure of performance if profit margin cannot be improved due to competition 
the other way is to improve return on investment is by increasing the rate of capital assets turnover by improving the productivity analysis of return on investment ratio calculation of profit ratios and turnover ratios once return on investment is worked out a further analysis is undertaken by working out net profit ratios and capital turnover ratios analysis of productivity if we want to find out as to why productivity has gone down we should split the capital employed into fixed assets and working capital so turnover of capital employed is now equal to sales divided by fixed asset plus sales divided by working capital first is called as fixed asset turnover and second is called working capital turnover both fixed asset and working capital should be effectively used to increase the productivity turnover ratios can be calculated for each asset example stock turnover debtors turnover machinery turnover this helps us to know which asset in particular has been underused this helps to study the level of trading with the level of capital employed higher turnover ratio indicates over trading or under capitalism lower turnover ratio indicates under trading or over capitalism analysis of profitability if we want to know more about the profitability we can calculate operating ratio that is 100 minus net profit ratio this tells us whether the company has been successful in controlling the cost or not operating cost can be further classified into cost of production administration expenses selling cost etc this would give a percentage of sales consumed by various costs that is expense ratios specific corrective action is possible when we know which cost in particular has increased during the year net profit can be improved by saving these cost similarly there are some limitations to return on investment ratio like there is possibility of window dressing it is based on earnings and investment both are subject to various manipulation or arbitrary decisions by the management on various accounting policies such as depreciation inventory valuation etc so there is possibility of window dressing that is manipulation of these ratios different formula there are various formulas for calculating both profit and capital employed example capital employed or net capital employed etc it is necessary to know exact way in which return on investment has been computed short term view to improve return on investment the management may try to generate short term profit a company may cut down research and development expenditure to improve profits which would adversely affect the company's performance in the long run emphasis on capital return on investment gives more importance to capital resources where profit may be the result of human resource as well let us understand this concept of return on investment or return on capital employed with the help of small example from the following information calculate the rate of return on capital employed sales rupees 50 lakhs capital employed rupees 40 lakhs profit earned rupees 6 lakhs in this example they have given us sales 50 lakhs capital employed 40 lakhs and profits earned 6 lakhs
return on capital employed is equal to profit before interest and tax divided by capital employed multiplied by 100 in the absence of information profit earned 6 lakh itself will be considered as profit before interest and tax divided by capital employed 40 lakhs multiplied by 100 it is 15 percent in this video we have understood the relevance of return on investment ratio how it is calculated how it is presented and how what it indicates when we are observing the ratio thanks for watching this video stay in tune with ikeda and subscribe to our channel ikeda thank you